Welcome to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain, and my guest today is Jason Turner. Stay tuned while we come back and find out just a little bit more about this artist. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV, DJ Rain, and I'm sitting here with Jason Turner. Jason, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? Good. Um, <coughs> congratulations on the wins in the Jackson Free Press, first and foremost. Thank you. I appreciate um, it. Huge accomplishment, because I know you're, you're in multiple categories. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, you know, we kind of want get, to get to know who you are, mm -hmm. um, your history you know, in music. So tell us a little bit of how you got into music. Uh, I'd say first, I got into music when I was about eight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just grew up listening to different rock and roll, and my uncles played guitar, played a lot of blues, and my mom worked at Malico Records. So I grew up, I would get punished in school and have to go shrink wrap CDs, mm -hmm. and I was just always in, just in love with it. And as I got older, I started playing guitar and writing my own songs, and it was just it's a way for me to kind of anything I'm dealing with, positive or negative, it's a way for me to express that. Right. You know, it's it's. I honestly couldn't see me doing anything else. Yeah. I mean, if I go a couple of days without playing, I feel kind of sick almost. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know how you feel. Uh, now, I know that you said that you're self-taught on, mm -hmm. uh, on the guitar. Mm -hmm. And how many instruments total do you play? About six. I play guitar, harmonica, uh, piano, banjo, mandolin, mm -hmm. bass guitar. But that's, that's kind now, of are those all self-taught? All self-taught. Really? Yeah, I took lessons a year ago just kind of with guitar just to get better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I taught myself everything. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it was just you sit like sitting in the room just watching video? Or, I mean, how did you go about Well, I mean, I'm, I'm no young, young pup, so I mean, right. there was no YouTube or anything <laughs> like that. But, you know, I had a book and painstakingly trying to figure out how to do it myself and driving my parents absolutely crazy. Yeah. You know, especially if you hear old tapes of me trying to sing. Which I'm, yeah, I've got tapes of my parents yelling at me, you know, really? quit. <laughs> you know? Now, you said your, your mom worked at Malico. She did. Uh, so, is, is your family like a, a big influence um, as far as music goes in your life? Or? I would say they were, they were. My grandparents both sang, mm -hmm. and uh, like I said, my, guitar, my uncles both played guitar. Mm -hmm. And just, I grew up around that, you know, grandparents singing every moment of the day, and uncles playing guitar. and. I don't know. I guess it's just in the in the blood of my family. Yeah, I know that you had a lot of successes um, over the years uh, mm -hmm. doing this for a while. Uh, how how is the family? I mean, are they real supportive with you? They, they they were once I got older, and you know, when I was younger, they wanted me to do well in school, and I was maybe the worst student that ever was in Jackson, Mississippi. I, uh, I got you beat. No, I've got you beat. <laughs> Ask Forest Hill. They probably still remember me. It's been a while, but uh, you know, they wanted me to do well in school, but. I, I kind of knew when I was 13 and started playing guitar that that's what I was going to do. Yeah. And I didn't really care, you know, if if I was 80 still trying to make it. Right. You know? And I still don't. I mean, I'm that's you know, but that's it is what I do now. But I man, I, th I think you know, once you're all, once you're a musician, you're always a musician, regardless if yeah. you're active in the scene or not. Just like being a DJ, we right. had a conversation about that. You know, you don't retire. Yeah. You know, you just do it in a different way. I mean, either yeah. you know, for friends or you do it professionally. But mm -hmm. you know, that musician's kind of I think embedded in your. In well, your for me, it's like it's just like that's it's in my blood. I mean, there's I can't see me doing anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I have to do it. You know, right. it's like you have to eat. I have to play music. Right, and I, and I and I know like right now like you have a lot of gigs with yourself. Mm -hmm. But tell me about the Jason Turner band. Jason Turner Band started, our first gig was actually Jubilee Jam years ago. Mm -hmm. I'd somehow weaseled my way into playing there without a band, but I said I had a band called Jason Turner Band, mm -hmm. and talked them into letting us play, and it was our first ever show. And that was probably 1998, mm -hmm. you know, and it's been together, I mean, there's been different variations of it for years. I moved away to Nashville for about five years, so I didn't have it while I was there. But um, I came back, got it back up and running, and 
I mean, just played everywhere, Tennessee, Louisiana, Alabama, you name the state, we've gone to it. And mm -hmm. Still going strong. And then we just won a contest with C Spire last year where we actually uh, got to play a Bulldog Bash in front of 35,000 people. So nice. It was, so uh, how, did you, how did you win that contest? I was a voting between different songs. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a song in my, my last city called Nothing Town. And mm -hmm. just getting everybody to vote, using the internet to your strength. Yeah, so, so really public opinion got you there. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> or, so. I, or I badgered them enough asking them to vote, <laughs> one of the two. So how, I'll how, take it either way. How was um, the, ba the Bulldog Bash? Um, I w I, it was very nerve-wracking, actually. I mean, it was a great experience, but I've played for a lot of people before, but I've never walked out and seen just miles and miles of people before. Yeah. I couldn't see where they ended. No. So I mean, it was kind of a, Whew, all right, let's do this, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and there's you know they had two headlining acts, the Avett Brothers and Jake Owen. So you know most of that crowd was there to see them. Right. So it, it kind of the first songs closed my eyes about halfway through. I opened up and we got done with the first song. Everybody started clapping. I was like, all right, well, now we're gonna have fun. You yeah. Know? So so you, do you still get that feeling like when you go to these smaller smaller gigs, or are you just kind of getting more comfortable as you're getting seasoned? Um, I've never really had stage fright. Mm -hmm. I get, or maybe I do and I just don't realize it is, but it's more of an excitement thing. Right. Like it's nervous energy. Like I, I don't get like, oh man, what if they don't like us? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I get more like, all right, let's, we got to play. Why is it, why are we staying around? Let's, you know, like I get kind of anxious. Right. <coughs> now I know you have, uh, you have 13 years out now, mm -hmm. um, with future plans, plans for another project. How many albums have you put out? Uh, that one was actually my third album. There were two that I put out that kind of on a very small scale, pre-internet, mm -hmm. you know, before you could get the word out to a lot of people. So I kind of count that as a first album, but I've got three out now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully get started on the next record here in the next couple months and have it out by the end of the year. Nice. What, what really motivated you to, to, to do that first album? Like a lot of people, they, you know, they make songs, they play them for their friends or mm -hmm. try to push one song. What, ma what motivated you to do that first album? Uh, kind of seeing how the record industry is not doing so well, and that with the internet and and all the different tools you can use now, you don't really need a record label. Mm -hmm. And I've been waiting half my life for you know the guy to walk up with a suitcase of money and go here, go make an album, go make you know. And right. I was like, forget that, I'll put it out myself. Yeah, and put out the songs that I like, and I feel as an artist are the ones I want to represent me. And I just made it myself. I did it at Malico. Yeah, you know, kind of. Growing up there, you know, with the family, I knew knew the people there. Record the album there, and it's done real well. I mean, yeah. it's, I was how many? Do you, how do you know about how many you've got? You've sold so so far? Over two thousand. Two thousand. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's that's a that's a great accomplishment right there. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> charitable er organizations. I know you do some work with uh, with some charities. Which charities? Um, I've done a, I've done a few different things for different groups. Uh, We've played for the Mississippi Lung Association a few times, and Larry Batson. Mm -hmm. We've done a few shows with that, with with the band called Storage Twenty Four. We did some shows with them. Um, a lot of different groups. Yeah, you that, know? those those two are really, really, really I mean, important organizations here. I do mm -hmm. some work with, uh, you know, the Cancer Relay for Life. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know you know it's important to give back to that community because that oh, community yeah. is the ones you know that really support you and support your music, your right. events, you know stuff like that. Um, now I know that uh, I know you have some TV shows coming up. We're going to talk about that um, mm -hmm. in, a, in a little bit. But um, your accolades, like, tell me tell me a little bit about that. Like um, what you what you've won so far. Besides the Jackson Free Press, we're going to get into that. Mm -hmm. um, any of the other awards that you that you've won? Uh, free press a lot. You know, last year won a lot of awards, different for best singer and mm -hmm. best singer songwriter won second and third, and that last year. This year won best singer and best musician, mm -hmm. and a bunch of other awards in it. You know, second, third place, and different things. That's a, that's an uh, that's an amazing mm -hmm. feat. I mean, multiple categories in mm -hmm. in one publication. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I ain't got the Grammy yet, but we'll have to keep trying. The Grammy? <laughs> you're waiting on the Grammy, are you? Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a small break, um, and we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk a little bit more about um, you know your future plans, you know your projects, and um, and what's you know what's going on with you. Okay. So make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
To inquire more information about today's guest, Jason Turner, go to www.jasonturnerband.com or twitter.com slash jasonturnerband and check out CD Baby and iTunes. Exposure TV is sponsored and produced by Peaches of On Location TV. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain, and my guest today is Jason Turner. Jason, we were talking a little bit earlier about uh, some TV shows that you have coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me, tell me about them. Uh, one that's coming out soon. The first one coming out soon is uh, the, called the Oxford Sessions, mm -hmm. where it features a lot of Mississippi musicians coming to Oxford and performing there in a in a recording studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, went up there actually on my birthday. Uh, last year and recorded, you know, seven or eight songs, just kind of doing what I doing what I do. Right. What I'm going to do my solo show. I use a lot of different loop pedals and crazy stuff to play lead guitar over it, and it was a, it's a good experience, you know. Mm -hmm. But I th th that is going to be on PBS, I believe, mm -hmm. and maybe Stars, hopefully. So how did that how did that come about? Was it work that you done in Oxford? I mean, like, did you have to try out for it? And no, uh, they just, they called, it's kind of random, they called and asked me to do it. Really? Which, there's a dip, bunch of bigger artists that are going to be in there, I think I'm maybe the, the low man on the totem pole, which mm -hmm. I don't mind, but... No, because you're on there. Yeah, so, but, like, Miss North Mississippi All-Stars are going to be on it, mm -hmm. a few guys from the Black Crows are going to be on it, so... Do you know when it's supposed to air? I don't, I need to find out, because I'm kind of curious myself, I'm right. ready, ready to see if I don't, if I look crazy, <laughs> it, to be honest. <laughs> I doubt that, I've seen you perform many times. Um, now the other show, tell me about the other show that you have. I just found out about a show called Country Flashbacks, where basically an artist that's newer and maybe different, mm -hmm. which I'm not country at all, but, mm -hmm. but they go with an older country artist who performs his song or her song, you know, in, in their style, and then the new artist does their interpretation of it. Right. Yeah, but that's kind of a new concept. Just, I just found out about it Friday, but it's... Oh, nice. Well, but, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Now, Cause that's what kind of the way I do. I do a lot of covers. Sorry, not to cut you off. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I do a lot of covers sometimes when I play, and it's it's fun to recreate it in your own style. Right. You know, and I kind of I kind of want people to figure out which song it is about halfway through. Like, right. Oh, cool. You know. Yeah. All right. Now going back to uh, 13 years. Okay. Um, what is the what is the meaning behind the 13 years? At the time. It honestly is the most uncreative album title, but it was just how long I've been playing music mm -hmm. and being like, and kind of, kind of making fun of myself, being right. like, okay, it took you 13 years of performing to finally put out a CD, right? You know? And that's basically the gist of it, right there. Mm -hmm. You know, just making fun of myself. Yeah, and the, the song, the songs that are on on the album, um, mm -hmm. well, you know, what, what were some of your, what, what's your favorite track of the album first and foremost? Um, they're all kind of like my children, so I like them all. You yeah. Know? Um, I'd say my favorite's probably the first song, Hotter in the Sun, mm -hmm. you know? What, what is that song about? Uh, it's, a, it's about, as you get, if, you, if anybody's been in a relationship a long time, it goes, it starts out, starts out exciting, you know, and you're like kids and you're, you're really happy about it. But, you know, six, seven years start popping around and it, you can almost become stranger, especially in my line of work. I'm, I travel a lot, mm -hmm. play over 300 shows a year, so I don't, I don't see, see my girl very often. Right. So, I mean, it can get to where we're almost strangers. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, the g gist of that song is, you know, it used to be like a fire, you know, and then now it's almost like we're shells of people sometimes. Right. You know? I mean, we've, it's, it's all better now. It's not yeah. kind of bad there, but, you know, but, it, but I mean, that's how I write. I'm very honest, and, and I just say what I think or feel, you know. So with that many shows, um, is, there, is there somebody booking that for you, or is it you? Me. You? Mm -hmm. So, so you're doing your own your own booking that many bookings a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, an artist that's coming up that's trying to to do something like that, like how, you know, what advice do you give to them to 
be able to book their own events like that versus going through someone mm -hmm. else that has like this deep connects. They need to be professional. You know, it's your music is your business. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you can be the artist, you can be the star, but if you don't have a good business sense, you're going to fail. Right. You know, I mean, there's there's so many people I see that maybe they, they handle themselves like they're already famous mm -hmm. when, in you know, other bar owners will talk about it or clubs, you know, and how I try to handle myself is I make it easy, the easiest person to work with so that it's easy for me to call these places and rebook. Right. You know, build a good lasting re relationship. Mm -hmm. you know? Now tell me about tell me about this future project uh, that you that you're hoping to uh, to finish this year. The new album. I'm mm -hmm. doing a lot of writing since that came out. Mm -hmm. Actually, I wanted to have it out this year, but just trying you know funding and different things like that. Mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of writing, going up to Nashville, writing with different artists, mm -hmm. trying to you know put a different spin on it, and just writing a lot on my own. So I've got about 90 songs. I'm trying to figure out what will be the 12. Right. You know. You know yeah. So Hopefully, hopefully, I'm going to record it in Nashville this year. So, so you, you talked about going up there and, and working with some artists. Who are some of the notable artists that you've worked with? Um, regardless, more songwriters. You know. Songwriters. Well, as far as like um, you know, work performing with or you know, work or working actually on your project. Who like who are some of the other people you've performed with? Uh, I performed with Andrew Pates. Mm -hmm. We've done a few shows together, which. You know, he was in the Pates group, that's well known here. He lives in Nashville now. Um, Jeremy Lister from the Sing Off and Brian Fuente, who's about to be on The Voice on the Super Bowl Sunday. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of different artists I worked with that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> now, as far as like your 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 schedule, uh, mm -hmm. you, do you do you perform more around here, or are you traveling more to to Nashville now? I travel all over. I mean, I get down to Louisiana a lot, to mm -hmm. New Orleans, Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. Mobile, Alabama, Birmingham, Nashville, but, Memphis, you know, everywhere. Kind of regionalized. Yeah, that was, yeah, regional, that, that's good. So, how many, how many days a week do you think that you would spend on the road promoting yourself? Five. Five? Yeah, four to five. Just depends on the week. Yeah, so okay. I'm, in summertime, can get up to six, really? seven, yeah. You do a lot of traveling outside of the outside of the state. Um, oh yeah. In, in the summertime, is it more so in the summertime? That's kind of year round. Is you it? Know? I mean, I try, I try to stay gone so that Jackson's not completely sick of me. Right. You know? Yeah. If you, I mean, some every once in a while I can get to where it's like, oh, he played there, he played there, he played there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll see it. No need to see him again. You know. What it? What What can you say? You know, wh why you've been out performing has been like. You have, have you had any like defining moments like you know like I'm really like moving toward the goals that I've, I've set for myself as a musician um, well, definitely Bulldog Bash was one of them yeah you know finally getting I don't know it's like my music has always felt it's you know it's not it's not good for small places if that makes sense right it's just it's I kind of grew up listening to Pearl Jam and these bigger bands mm -hmm. you know seeing them play in arenas and stuff and that's kind of I don't know, it's like almost right that way. Right. So getting to be on that stage and finally seeing that many people was it's like, okay, this thing's moving forward. And I've built a good relationship with C Spire where we're hopefully doing a lot more things like that this year. Yeah, we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about that um mm -hmm. when we come back from break. <coughs> but um that experience with the Bulldog Bash, like, mm -hmm. you know, how was that? I mean I know like It's surreal. It was like walking on clouds. I mean it really was like the it's kind of a blur. Everything went so fast. I mean, yeah. it, the set was an hour long, but it felt like two seconds. Really? And then getting back and just kind of seeing, hanging out with the people, you know, in the crowds and watching the bigger bands and realizing you were just up there five minutes ago. It's yeah. pretty cool, you know. That, that's got to be. I'll, I'll do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you plan on, like, entering the contest for next year, I take it? I don't know. I don't know if they're going to have a contest or how they're going to do it. Okay. So. Um, Hopefully, I just get asked to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I don't drive everybody crazy trying to get them to vote again. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a small break. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about the ceasefire thing uh, and where people can find you and some other things. So uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, and we'll be back with Jason Turner. To inquire more information about today's guest, Jason Turner, go to www.jasonturnerband.com or twitter.com slash jasonturnerband and check out CD Baby and iTunes.
Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Exposure TV is sponsored and produced by Peaches of On Location TV. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV, DJ Rain, and my guest today, Jason Turner. Uh, Jason, now we were talking about the C Spire thing, so mm -hmm. tell, me, tell me the relationship between Jason Turner and C Spire, formerly known as uh, Cellular South. Correct. So uh, it's, it's been a gradual relationship. I've done, you know, when they first launched, it was called, it's called Bright Lights now, which is their focus on music. And it's a really a great tool where they, they let unknown artists get exposure that they otherwise wouldn't get. Mm -hmm. And when they first launched it, it was called Emerge, now it's Bright Lights. We played their launch party. That was kind of where we started building that relationship, which they liked it, but it actually was maybe one of the worst gigs I'd ever done. Really? Yeah, I, we had played in Auburn the night before, and stupidly, I didn't realize how far... In my brain, I was like, oh, it's only Alabama, it's not that far. Mm -hmm. Not that it was all the way over to the Georgia border. <laughs> and we had to play to one, and then I had to play at noon in Jackson. So we drove straight through the night. I had the flu as well, mm -hmm. and it was about 100 degrees. I was melting. It was horrible. I'm surprised they even talked to me anymore from that. <laughs> but, but we played that, and then we had another event this summer for the Recording Academy. They're hosting that mm -hmm. episode event where the Recording Academy came and talked about the Grammys and, mm -hmm. you know, different things that you can do for, you know, with your music through them. And I played that party. Mm -hmm. And then I um, then won that contest to do the Bulldog Bash. So right. it's been kind of a gradual relationship that hopefully we're building some cool things that we can do for other artists. So now, okay, so they deal with a lot of like independent artists. So how did that, how did you start to build that relationship with C Spire? Just playing music for them, I think, you know, yeah. and, and getting behind it. I mean, I, I try to use the internet is my main source of getting mm -hmm. the word out there. Mm -hmm. So it was, at the time, I was like, hey, this is cool. It's another tool to yeah. get my music somewhere it didn't. Right. But, you know, <laughs> and I just, I don't know, maybe using, you know, over-promoting it kind of gained attention. Yeah. I try to do that. So, <laughs> so, uh, so do you guys have, like, any future events with C Spire that are coming Not up? yet. There's, there's talk, so. so okay. Hopefully there's going to be some great things going on. Okay. Now, tell, tell me about uh, your website, because I know, I know mm -hmm. 13 years can be found on uh, iTunes, iTunes, Amazon, CD Baby, you, Rhapsody, you mm -hmm. name, name it, it's out there. But right. uh, the easiest place to find it is on jasonturnerband.com, which has my tour dates, pictures, mm. news, you know, everything a website has. Mm. All right, with so many avenues to, uh, to yeah. purchase your album, did you, did you do that yourself? I did. Uh, the, so through, so you can set it up through, there's different avenues now for independent artists like TuneCore or City Baby mm -hmm. to get your album out, and they, they spread it digitally for you. Yeah. You know, you pay a little bit extra, and they'll take care of that for you. Right. Okay, so, so what would be the process, like, if, you know, if you had a young artist that, you know, that wanted to get their music out there, what, mm -hmm. I mean, do you just sign up? I mean... It's real easy. Uh, I just kind of Google around, mm -hmm. you know, and found CD Baby. I like them the most because they, they'll sell your physical copies as well mm -hmm. as your digital. And I mean, it's, and their website's real cut and dry on how you can set up for digital distribution as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you kind of, like I was saying earlier, I mean, you really, if you got, a, you know, a few dollars or you save up a few dollars and don't, you know, blow it on things you don't need, you can put out your own album. Right. You know, and kind of, kind of skip the record company. Yeah, because because I, I know I know a lot of people, you know, like they want to see their their music on iTunes or CD Baby, or whatever, and some of them just don't really know how easy it could be. Yeah, I've talked yeah. to different artists who, you know, I'm like, why is your stuff not on there? They're like, well, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. like, I mean, you're pretty much self-contained in your own in your own right with your music. Mm -hmm. um, we did talk about um, like a mini. Uh, tour that you're you're setting mm -hmm. up this summer. Yeah, going out in March, uh, you know, start out and kind of go through Tennessee and come back. Got a mm -hmm. show in Nashville, then Memphis the next night, then down to Starkville, see the college kids again, and mm -hmm. 
back to Jackson and also hit Mobile at the first of the month. So, now are these like all like previous like people they've done business with? Uh, or are they new no, venues. These are new venues. New venues. Mm. And then hopefully uh, working with some people to get out to Oklahoma and come back through, kind of hit all of Texas you in the, the summer. You're gonna be pretty busy this summer. I hope so. <laughs> so I'm um, not busy. I'm not making money. So right. <laughs> um, so when you like how long how long does it take to to book something like that because i mean with multiple cities and states like i mean i know it's not just picking up the phone and you got to you know. be diligent i mean you got to i luckily my day jobs that i just about got fired from all of them because mm -hmm. i wasn't i'm not a good employee but most of them were sales jobs and i had a job and when i lived in tennessee for a while at a fundraising company mm -hmm. And they, they kind of they train you on how to cold call, mm -hmm. you know, and and so I kind of use that, you know, I'll call if they don't answer the first day, I'll give it a couple of days and I'll call back. They don't answer then, you know, I'll call two weeks later. So you, you can you can worry somebody to death out of a gig, right? You know, you can bug them to death where they won't answer your phone call anymore. <coughs> so the job did teach you something. It did. <laughs> I mean, you know, Didn't you gotta, teach you, you gotta I mean, give them that. But I mean, that's, that's I finally was like, okay, if I'm gonna do music, I'm all in. Yeah, you know, I put out that record, and I kind of that was it for me. And so well, now I wake up just like anybody else. You know, I'm up at seven o'clock in the morning making phone calls and promoting and mm -hmm. writing songs, and I still practice my guitar six hours a day. You know. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as your uh, as far as like your like you know we have Jason Pern Jason Turner Band dot com, mm -hmm. um, Facebook, Facebook. What's your Facebook? Everything, just about everything I have is slash. Jason Turner Band. So Facebook.com slash Jason Turner Band, Twitter.com slash Jason Turner Band, YouTube.com slash Jason Turner Band, ReverbNation.com. Now, with 13 years being a Jason Turner project, is mm -hmm. there is there plans for a future like Jason Turner Band project? I don't know. I kind of, I mean, the way I view it is each record's different. So if the next record's more of the band and it's more focused on that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but... And plus, there's so many Jason Turners. That's actually why I originally named it the band part, because there's so many that sing and songwrite. Mm -hmm. There's actually another Jason Turner band in Atlanta or somewhere now. Is it is it the same uh, genre of music as you? No, no. Now, now one thing I did mean to ask you, because mm -hmm. um, we were talking about um, one of those TV shows, mm -hmm. and you said you're not country, so what would you really classify your music as? I'd say Americana, which seem, Americana music seems to be that, that melting pot of a little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll, a little bit of blues, which is really just me growing up in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd hear country music everywhere. You know, really influenced by the blues with my uncles, what they listened to, and my mom working at Malico. Mm -hmm. You know, and and then I I personally loved rock. So I mean, it's, there's a little bit of all those elements in what I do. So who who would you say would be your biggest influence as far as your music goes? Biggest influence uh, growing up, it was. Unfortunately, it was hair metal, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And then, uh, in the '90s came, and there was Pearl Jam, mm -hmm. and they're still one of the biggest bands for me. I mean, it's yeah. just the lyrics are. I like I like honesty. I like lyrics that are great and that make you feel something. Right. You know, Bruce Springsteen's a big influence for me. Uh, Ryan Adams a big influence for me, mm -hmm. and just different songwriters. I yeah. like people who have something to say. Right. Like Bob Dylan, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, it's it's not Justin Bieber. <laughs> You know, but music a, music with meaning and getting a message out there. Yeah, I mean, it, it's more appreciative uh, to the, I think the general public than mm -hmm. just. Well, there's, there may be somebody there. in a bad situation that needs to hear how you survived the situation. Yeah, I mean that's what music was for me. I mean it's saved my life in more ways than none. Yeah, it, it still does. Definitely you know? an escape for people. Yeah. But we're about to close up, and I want to thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you having me. Uh, look forward to hearing the new project. Uh, make sure you keep in touch with us. And, definitely, uh, definitely. And keep us updated on, on what you have going on. I will, definitely. Uh, make sure that you guys check out Jason Turner's 13 Years, JasonTurnerBand.com, iTunes, CD Baby. Thank you for tuning in.